Lighting is complicated in Unity. So today I want to give you step by step instructions on how to light your game. We'll discuss render pipelines, indirect lighting and all other relevant topics. And by the end of this video, we will turn something like this into this. My name is Anand and let's get started. As a game developer, you'd usually want to start lighting your scenes towards the second half of the prototyping phase of your game. During the early stages, we could pretty much get away with the directional light, unless it's a horror game. This way, you won't have to waste your time working on the lights if the mechanics doesn't feel right. Once you're done with the mechanics and have the major visual assets in your game, I think it's reasonable to start with lighting. I'll be using free Cartoon World from the Asset Store by Richard Lester. Link will be in the description below. In this demo scene, I will make a few camera adjustments and remove all the lights just to start things off. Now the first thing that you should do is to choose a render pipeline. A render pipeline is basically code made by Unity or someone else that takes the objects on our scene and puts them on the screen. This is usually set up in the beginning of your project. There are three major pipelines that I present to you. The built-in rendering pipeline, URP and HDRP. You can also make custom ones as well. The built-in is the default one. This is great for any form of game. HDRP is best for games of AAA quality. This needs more resources and you'll be targeting medium to higher end devices. URP is universal. I'd recommend this for anything other than lower end mobile games. It gives you better visuals and lighting compared to the default one. Both of these would change how materials and rendering works and is more taxing than the default. I recommend sticking to URP if you want great graphics with good performance or the built-in one if you need good quality and great performance. For this tutorial, we'll stick to the default. If you're sticking with the other ones, how things work are a little bit different, but the overall workflow that we'll discuss today will remain the same. Next is indirect lighting. Direct lighting is always simple in Unity. It's actually the indirect or the bounced lighting that is making things complicated. So first we need to ask ourselves if we need indirect lighting at all. We need to make an artistic choice. Super Mario 64 doesn't really have any indirect lighting. The colors are flat and even the shadows are fake. This would mean minimal memory consumption. Most 3D games do have indirect lighting, which means you'd have to work with Unity's global illumination systems already built in. Now comes the question of whether this indirect lighting should be updated in real time or not. If you do not have to update it in real time, you'd have to use baked GI. If you do need to update it, you'd have to use real time GI or a mixture of both called Mixed Lighting. Now real-time GI by Enlighten will get deprecated in the future. Instead, Unity will have its own version here. Baked GI would still be the progressive light mapper. Baked GI is optimal for performance while the real-time GI would give more realistic results. You should use Baked GI when your environment doesn't have any dynamic elements. In other words, most of your mesh would be static and we can just bake the lighting information into light maps. And Unity will use these light maps and light up our scene. Tremendous performance boost, however, increase in memory consumption. So it's a trade-off. In real-time GI, there is still using of light maps. All calculations are made on the fly when we run the game and therefore it would be taxing. You should go for this when the lights in your scene that change have a big visual impact on your scene. For example, a sun that is moving across the sky. The shadows need to be updated in real time in this case and therefore this option is best. Mixed lighting is however the golden egg. We used baked light maps for our static objects in the scene and real time GI on objects that are dynamic or moving. It is very good with performance and still gives dynamic results when we need it. So let's go ahead with mixed lighting for this setup. To set it up, we go to window, rendering, lighting and everything is grayed out because we need to create a lighting settings asset. Let's click on new and an asset gets created. Let's rename it to global lighting. Baked GI would be turned on by default. Make sure the light mapper is set to progressive GPU if you have one. This will make things much faster. You can play around with these settings, especially the light map resolution and samples. Set the resolution to 10 as a starting point and work your way up or down depending on the results. Also check real time GI as well and let's leave it at default. Of course, you can play around with the settings. Next step in my opinion is to select a lighting mode. It's in the settings and is really important. This is an option for mixed lighting. There are three modes, baked indirect, subtractive 
and shadow mask baked in direct and shadow mask both combines real time direct lighting with baked indirect lighting but shadow mask bakes the shadows of distant game objects and blends them automatically with real time shadows it is going to be the most realistic therefore it is suitable for mid range to high end hardware baked indirect is good for mid range hardware subtractor gives baked direct and indirect lighting and it only renders real time shadows for one directional light this is best for games with stylized art or low end hardware i'll choose shadow mask for this example next color space go to project settings player color space and we can choose either linear or gamma linear offers accurate rendering compared to gamma like in the way light calculations are made when it comes to light intensity and fall off set this to linear it's better unless you want the gamma retro ish effect next up set up the sky box we go back to the lighting tab and go to environment and we can choose a sky box we'll be choosing fantasy sky box free import it and we'll be choosing this material make sure that the source is set to sky box you can also set it to either gradient or color if you want custom environment lighting for example in indoor scenes you can set this to a gradient and choose really dark colors for little to no environment lighting next we need to play around with the intensity set the resolution to something like 512 you can also play around with reflections here then hit generate lighting and you can see this is too much so let's set this back to one and bake again cool next step would be to actually set up the lights in your scene take your time to do this step and it's okay to play around and make mistakes just group together all your lights into a separate game object called lights make sure to place lights in areas that makes sense for example on light sources like this lamp post it's a good idea to place lights on prefabs of light sources so that you don't have to manually place them one by one i do it on the street lights and the cars in this case if you want a light in your game to cast shadows on the player and stuff use mixed light mode on that light if you don't want it choose baked light baked lights do not contribute to specular lighting as well mixed lights take up more memory than real time lights and more calculations compared to baked lights so just keep that in mind you can also add msf surfaces to provide lighting emission will only be received by static surfaces msf geometry on characters do not contribute to scene lighting i'm going to add a simple msf plane on the headlights of these vehicles and i will experiment with the street lamps as well once we are done adding lights just generate lighting and test things out we can also click on this arrow here and clear baked data as well if you need characters to pick up light from msf materials you need to use light probes which will be our next step light probes capture information about light that passes through an empty space in our scene and then passes on that information to the moving objects like the player we can do that by adding a light probe group component and then selecting these dots and duplicating them around the scene place light probes in a more condensed pattern around areas that have complex or highly contrasting light and spread them out over areas where the light does not significantly change like the open areas this step is optional and is an artistic choice if you do choose to add light probes take a look at unity docs on light probes and scene loading make sure to generate lighting to preview the result another optional step would be to add a light probe proxy volume component use this on large dynamic objects like particle systems or giant moving objects by default renderers only take light from one light probe this component accepts lighting information from multiple light probes and blends it it is very useful and next adding reflection probes create a reflection probe from the hierarchy and this will simply add and receive reflections to all objects in the area for the type we have baked custom and real time reflection probes bakes cube maps by theoretically placing a camera in the middle and projecting rays on all directions and putting it on an unwrapped cube and objects in this probe uses information from this cube map to add reflections this is what baked does custom probes allows us to provide a custom cube map baked and custom only affect static objects that are marked reflection probe static by clicking on this drop down here and real time updates reflections real time and you can have reflections on moving objects like the player this is going to be really expensive just keep that in mind while placing reflection probes split to your maps into rooms or cubes and you can go to bake and then bake all probes 
to bake all probes. And you can see that reflections are added. Once you are done, generate lighting. One optional step would be to add particle effects. They can have emission in them. I'll be using Magic VFX, Ice, free package from Unity Asset Store, and we'll play around with it until I get the desired effect. It's just for the aesthetics, and it's definitely something that you should have in your game. And the final step would be post-processing. You can do post-processing a bit early in the production as well. This is what takes your visuals to the next level, and it's pretty easy to do. The first thing you do is to import the post-processing package from the package manager. Both HDRP and URP have their own post-processing implementation. No need to import this in that case. First you go to the camera and add a post-processing layer. Then create an empty game object, call it PP and add a post-processing volume. In our project, create a post-processing profile, call it post-processing and then set this to the volume. Make sure to hit is global for it to take effect. Set the volume to a new layer called PP and in the camera, set the layer to PP. Now you can open the profile and add various effects. I highly recommend adding bloom, ambient occlusion and color grading. Play around with the settings and have fun with this. And there we have it ladies and gentlemen. We have looked at almost everything about lighting our scene. Let me know what content you want to make and if you like these glasses. And as always, take care, see ya, bye bye.